Before proceeding, please make sure to subscribe to Intel Maniac and turn on the bell icon for upcoming videos. You can always support my work with your likes, comments and shares. And you can join me on Facebook and Instagram at Dental Maniac. For images and transcripts, please visit my Patreon page, the link for which is given here above. So in today's video, we'll look into pharmacokinetics. Pharmacokinetics is the activity or movement of drugs into the body over a period of time. It includes the processes by which drugs are absorbed, distributed, metabolized and then excreted by the body either through the feces or urine. In short, all those processing that the drug undergoes once it enters into the body is termed pharmacokinetics. Pharmacokinetics can be remembered by the mnemonic ADME. In today's video, we'll look into the drug absorption with respect to the gastrointestinal tract. Drug absorption is the transfer of a drug from the site of administration, mainly the GI tract here, into the bloodstream. The rate and extent at which drugs are absorbed depends on the medium where the drug is administered, such as the pH, the chemical characteristics of the drug itself, and then the route of administration of a drug, through which we can estimate the bioavailability of a drug as well. If you don't know what the routes of drug administration are or what the bioavailability of a drug is, you can refer to my previous video. The link for the video is given in the description box and in the right corner of the video here. Drugs can be absorbed from the GI tract by four mechanisms listed as passive diffusion, facilitated diffusion, active transport and endocytosis. For descriptive purpose, let's zoom in a small part of the GI tract and then Further zoom into a part of the cell membrane of an individual cell and look into all four mechanisms of drug absorption from the GI tract. The first one on the list is the passive diffusion. Passive diffusion involves crossing of a substance that is a drug molecule across a cell membrane from an area of high drug concentration such as the gastrointestinal tract to an area of low drug concentration such as the blood. Most of the drugs are absorbed by this mechanism. It's called passive because it does not require any energy expenditure. If the drug is lipid soluble, it simply moves across the membrane phospholipid bilayer. And if the drug is water soluble, it penetrates the cell membrane through aqueous channels or pores. The phospholipid bilayer is a double layer of phospholipids with their phosphate groups facing the intracellular and extracellular environments while their lipid components face each other, hence making it easy for lipid soluble drugs to diffuse easily through it. In facilitated diffusion, also known as facilitated passive diffusion, drugs enter the body cells through transmembrane carrier proteins. Once a drug molecule attaches to the carrier protein, the carrier protein then undergoes a conformational change and transports the drug into the cell. Just like passive diffusion, facilitated diffusion does not require energy. However, the carrier protein can be saturated and then it may be inhibited by compounds that compete for the carrier protein. Unlike passive diffusion, active diffusion always need an energy expenditure by the ATP or adenosine triphosphate. In active transport, drugs are moved against a concentration gradient from a region of low drug concentration to a region of high drug concentration such as bloodstream. Active transport are considered to be limited to drugs structurally similar to endogenous substances such as ions, vitamins, sugars or amino acids. These drugs are usually absorbed from specific sites in the small intestine against a concentration gradient. Lastly, the endocytosis involves absorption of fluid or drug particles which are relatively larger in size. The drug is encapsulated by a cell. The membrane of the cells closes around the pharmacological substance and infuses to form a complete vesicle, which later detaches and moves into the inside of the cell. This process also requires energy to take place. Let's now look into some really important factors that can affect and influence drug absorption. The first factor which we will look into is the pH. Drugs are either in weak acids or in weak bases form. Now what are these weak acids or weak bases? Keep in mind that everything which is an acid will have more of hydrogen ions 
However, weak bases will always come with a low concentration of hydrogen ions. A weak acid abbreviated as HA comes in unionized, nonpolar or uncharged form. This weak acid can dissociate and release a proton causing a charged ionized A9 to form. However, weak bases abbreviated as BH plus comes in their ionized, charged or polar form and loss of a proton from a weak base produces the uncharged or nonpolar base B. For a drug to pass through a biological membrane, it must be in its uncharged form, that is HA for weak acids and B for weak bases. The drug, either a weak acid or weak base, once introduced into the body, can dissociate both in their charged and uncharged forms. But since we said that only the uncharged, unionized form of the drug has the capability to pass biological membranes, the ratio between the charged and uncharged form of the drug depends on the pH of the medium where the drug is administered and by the strength of a weak acid or weak base, which is represented by the ionization constant, the pKa. pKa is defined as the affinity for hydrogen. The more the pKa value of a drug, the more will be the affinity for hydrogen and the more of the protonated forms of either drugs will be formed. If the pKa value of drug is around the pH value of the medium, then 50% of the drug will remain in its charged form and 50% in its uncharged form. If the pKa of the drug is lower than the pH of the medium, the deprotonated form for an acidic drug and the free base form for a basic drug will predominate. Conversely, if the pKa value is higher than the pH value of the medium, the affinity for hydrogen will be higher. Hence, the protonated forms HA for an acidic drug and BH plus for a basic drug will predominate. What we can learn here is that if the pH of the medium is low or acidic such as the acidic pH of the stomach where hydrogen ions are already saturated, the equilibrium for an acidic and a basic drug in such a medium will shift towards the left. That is, the drug will remain in its protonated forms for both weak acids and weak bases. But we see here that the protonated form of the acidic drug is in its unionized and uncharged permeable form, which means can be readily absorbed through the phospholipid bilayer of cell membranes. For, however, for a basic drug, the protonated form is in its ionized, charged and thus impermeable form, because we already said that charged forms of drugs are not permeable through biological membranes. So a basic drug in an acidic medium of stomach is poorly absorbed, while an acidic drug like aspirin in an acidic medium of the stomach is really well absorbed. I hope this makes sense. The second factor is the blood flow to the absorption site. The higher the blood flow, the higher will be the absorption rate of the drug. The blood flow of the stomach is less than the intestine, so the drug is absorbed more rapidly into, into the intestines than within the stomach. Intestine provides a more surface area than the stomach as it has brush border or microvilli, which increases the surface area of the intestine about thousand folds. The fourth factor is the contact time at the absorption site. If a drug remains for longer in a certain place, more of the drug will be absorbed. In cases where someone has severe diarrhea, the drug passes out of the body fast and the drug will not be absorbed well. On the other hand, if anything that delays the transport of the drug from the stomach to the intestine delays the rate of absorption. The presence of food in the stomach both dilutes the drug and at the same time slows the gastric emptying. Therefore, a drug taken with a meal is generally absorbed more slowly than it is taken with an empty stomach. The last factor which we will look into is the expression of P-glycoprotein. 
P-glycoprotein is one of the drug transporters that determines the uptake and efflux of a range of drugs. It's more like a housekeeping protein expressed almost in all tissues of healthy human body. P-glycoprotein is involved in transportation of drug from the tissues back into the blood, such that it pumps a drug out of the cells. Hence, in areas of the body where P-glycoprotein is highly concentrated, the rate of absorption of the drug is automatically reduced. I hope this video helps. If you think this video was really helpful, please do like, subscribe, share and comment if you have any questions. Thank you for watching.